Welcome, my VideoJet cult. Today, we are diving into the world of efficient printing solutions with a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a database for your VideoJet or Lynx printers. Get ready to streamline your message process and boost productivity like never before. Let's jump in. First task, we need to set up our message template. We're gonna open up Clarisoft to do this. We are going to select File and New. Let's set this template up for Lynx TT1000 107 millimeter printer. This is the same as a VideoJet 6530-107. We're gonna drop a few text box in here. Um, later, we will change these to database fields. Stick around and see how we do that. The first text box will be a product code, uh, then a description field. Next, we're gonna add two for our net weight. Um, the first text box will remain fixed text, but the second will be linked to our database. Now, uh, we'll add a user to enter text field for the machine ID. This is to simulate mm, the same code running on multiple pack lines. This could be like machine one, line two, etc. Then we'll drop a best buy date in here. Um, this best buy date will have a built-in 180 day offset. Finally, we will add a large UPC A barcode that will be linked to the database. So if you guys are finding any of this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe. So this looks good. Let's do a file, save as. Um, now we wanna search for our Claricom data folder on the C drive. This is installed when you install Clarisoft. Let's call this template database video. The name is important and we'll need to reference this when we build our database. All right, now we are gonna open up Microsoft Access um, to use for our database. You could also use Excel or even the built-in Clarisoft database, which I'll show you in another video down the road. We need to set up our top row with the important descriptions of our fields. I'm gonna use what I entered in the template. So product code, description, net weight, and UPCA. So I'm gonna fill up the table here with just random candy names and weights. Obviously this part of the, the process will be unique for every one of you guys, um, but we just need to get something in there so I can show you the use. After building my table, I'm gonna rename this database video table. Now finally, we have to tell Clarisoft what message template to actually use to build our message with all these values. In our video, we're just gonna use the same template for every single one of our product codes. If we had different templates, this is where we would program that. You can find the template by opening up the Clarisoft file and looking at the top of the screen. The template I am using is databasevideo.sif. Now, everything in there is important, even that space between database and video. Now, let's jump back into the access file and add another column. The first row of this column will be called SIF reference. The next six rows will all be database video dot SIF. This is where we'll map our path to our access table. Hop back into Clarisoft, click on tools located at the top and then select options. Find the database setup tab. We're gonna click the user specified data source button. Let's select the ODBC from the list for open database connectivity, then select the connection tab. We'll use a connection string and then click build button. Use the machine data source tab, then select new. Here we will search for Microsoft Access Driver. Name our new data source database table. Then we'll click on the select button, find the database video on the left hand side, it's database video.mdb. Finally, set up the catalog to use uh, by clicking our drop down. Then we test the connection. Once we're through all this, we can see a few things were updated on our options page. Now we need to set up the unique job code and the SIF reference. The values we can alter. The values we can enter here are gonna be the top row of our access table that we previously built. The unique job code will be the product code and the SIF reference 
and auxiliary SIF reference will both be our SIF reference column from the access table. The final step in this process is to change all of the fixed text fields that we had from our original template into database fields. So this is really simple. Um, double click on each of your fields, then change the type from fixed text to user specified data source. Then we go towards the bottom and tell the program what field we want to use for each text box. So this first one is gonna be the product code. Once this is set up, the color will go from black to green. We'll do the same process for the description, same for the net weight, and then finish with the UPCA or barcode. Congratulations. You just set up your database for your VinaJet printer, taking a huge step towards that printing efficiency process. But stick around for part two. In that, we're going to show you how to take what we just did here with the database and make a few changes inside your printer going from local to remote database. That allows us to actually pull our messages from the database via an ethernet connection. Hang around.